Well, hello, everyone. I'm glad you could join us again uh, today. I'm Charles Cook. Uh, you can uh, follow me here on Facebook or on YouTube or Rumble uh, at Charles Cook 52 or on Facebook at Charles Cook. Um, I'm joined today with Kurt uh, Riley from the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans. And today I uh, had him on that we're going to talk about uh, some issues that they've worked on in, in, down in their county and some of the successes that they've had. And so with that, Kurt, uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your group. Sure. Uh, my name is Kurt Riley. Uh, I am uh, the chairman of the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Sumner County, we are north um, east of Nashville. So the county directly northeast of Nashville is where we are. I think we're something like the seventh or eighth largest county in the state. Um, and about four years ago, uh, four years ago, this past August, you know, a group of us got together and decided that we needed to form basically a, um, an activist group, um, you know, a group of, of real hardcore worker bees right? People that were going to actually do the work. And we wanted to focus on electing God-fearing constitutional conservative men and women to local public office. That was the gist of what we wanted to try to do. Cool. Okay. Uh, so when, when y'all got started there, did y'all just like, uh, core group of you come together and then to start having monthly meetings or something? Well, you know, what really happened was um, I was, I was friends with the, the president of the um, Tennessee Republican assembly. And initially what happened was we became a chapter of the Tennessee Republican assembly. And then um, we may, we were basically existed as the Tennessee Republican Assembly. We started out with like eight, we had eight people coming to a meeting, right? Eight, eight or 10 people. I think the rule was you had to have eight people come to two meetings and you were considered an official chapter of the Tennessee Republican Assembly. Um, so we did that and we maintained that for about two years. And then we basically decided that we wanted some more flexibility in what we could do and how we did it. We wanted our own bylaws. We felt kind of like the Tennessee Republican Assembly bylaws were too strict. We're sending money to Nashville, right? We, we're just saying we're involved in Nashville. Like we've got our own problems in Sumner County and and we wanted to have more, more focus. So we decided to kind of break off and then do our own thing and become the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans, which I, to this day, I still think was the right move. And, and it's, it's seems to have really paid off. And the group, like I said, we were having eight to 10 people showing up. Um, Charles, at the last meeting, we had a hundred people there and we're freaking out. Like we got to figure out what to do with this room. We, we don't have a big enough place, which is a great problem to have. Ah. Um, when you have grass, a hundred grassroots activists are showing up, you know, last, uh, the previous month we had 80, right? So we're averaging 60 to 75 pretty, pretty regularly at our, our main meetings. Um, so it's, it's been very active, um, from that standpoint. Um, we, uh, we have, a couple different types of meetings. We have a regular Saturday meeting where we meet once a month on a Saturday. It's more formal, a little more serious, right? Really get into the issues depending on what they are that week. And then like this Friday, for example, we're doing what we call, we have these things called mix and mingles. They're just social events where we ask like-minded, you know, conservative patriots to come on out, have some dinner, some pizza, depends on burger, wherever we go. If, you know, if you want to have a few drinks, have a few drinks, have a few laughs, right? And we just sort of, you know, we talk about, we just, we do life together. So it's not just about politics, but politics affects our life and is so ingrained in everything that we do, you know, that we realize that there's a time to be serious and there's time to be a little bit more, you know, social, relaxed, get to know you know, your fellow patriot on a much maybe deeper or social level. So we do those as well. 
And, um, you know, the real secret sauce here, I think, is um, is is having that social aspect where where it's not just, hey, I show up once once a month on a Saturday and sit in a room and then I go home and I'm done. Right. It's not that. A lot of our members will tell you themselves, Charles, they'll say, listen, I, I do life with these people, right? Like these people are my friends. Like we're going to dinner, the kids play together, you know, I'm in this guy's wedding. I mean, it's, you know, these people didn't know each other from Adam and now they've come in from either out of state, out of county, or they're a native locally and they found the group and they've really found a camaraderie and a friendship, probably close to like a fraternity or sorority, maybe. Mm -hmm something that commonly comes up it's it's a sisterhood it's a brotherhood and uh, i think creating that sense of well-being overall and social aspect of it has been you know like the the fabric that's really grown this thing and stuck in and, and made it work yeah sounds like it sounds like you're having a, a great time in uh, your organization's really grew and everything you got a lot of passionate people down there really wants to be be involved and i've seen some of the results that you guys have had so it's been fantastic so yeah. um so i know some of the things that you, that you deal with i mean uh, i've done it locally and and uh, kind of statewide as well so what i want to inspire more people to get involved in local and state politics uh, especially at the local level, because I believe local is where it's at. And yes. it's, it's got to push from the local level out, not from the top down. Right. Uh, so uh, tell me really what it was that uh, kind of got you and that local core group involved. Usually there's something that triggers or some kind of couple of events that happens that wanted you to get involved. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the word trigger. That's a word that I use all the time in our group. Uh, these people walk in the door and it's like, you know, who are you? And they're like, hey, we're, you know, Mike and Betty. And it's like, well, what got you here? And it's like, well, you know, um, we just moved here and we bought this property. And then the next thing we know, they're they're building, they're trying to build this giant in, you know, apartment complex in our backyard. And, you know, they're, they're out there working and they flooded our yard. And we're, you know, we go up to city hall to find out, Hey, what's going on. We want to get some help. We've got problems and city hall, or, or, or in this case says too bad. So sad, go pound sand. And all of a sudden these people overnight are like, wait a second, you know, these people work for us. Like, I'm having some serious problems. These, this developer's flooding my yard. And I went to city hall to my representatives for help. And they were like, you know, beat it. And they were shocked that that happened. And then overnight, boom, now they're activists. You know, now they're running. Now they're like, hey, I'm running for city council and I want to be a part of something else. So I see these, these triggers quite often or the most common one of late and you've probably experienced it out there where you live is we're getting a huge influx of people from California, right? And, and, and right away, when we hear California, we panic, right? But that's not always the case. Many of the Californians in my group, they're refugees, yeah. right? They escaped places like Orange County, right? Where they've come out here and they said, oh my gosh, Kurt, it was horrible there. Like we hated it. We were a minority, the Democrats, you know, the story about California. So they come here, you know, they find our group and they think, oh my gosh, this is so refreshing. You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, everything feels conservative and Republican. Of course, they're in for a shocker when they realize, wait a second, not all Republicans here are actually Republicans. That's probably yeah. the big shocker to them. Yeah. Charles, is they, they're like, wait a second, I, isn't, well, everybody's Republican, everybody's cool, right? It's like, no, dude, no, uh I have a same saying in, in, um, in Sumner County, I say, um, you know, Sumner County is a place where the Republicans are Republicans and so are the Democrats, right? right. You cannot come to Sumner County. I mean, you can, but for the most part, you really can't come to Sumner County and run as a Democrat, because if you do, the chances of you winning are, are very, very small. So they'll, they'll come and run as a Democrat. So, and, and that was another issue that, that irked a lot of us 
was that we're at the local GOP meetings and we realize, wait a second, like half the people in here aren't really Republicans. Right. And when you address that with leadership, it's kind of like, well, you know, they they vote Republican and we're like, no, nah, their values. I know that person. And it's just like if you come in the, the GOP door and you say, I'll vote Republican, they say, come on in. Right. And we knew, Charles, we wanted to start a group that had a vetting process where we got to determine based on your value and vetting and interviewing and researching your life, like, are you really a Republican or are you just pretending because you live here in Sumner County? So. Right. And and that's the way it is here in Hamlin County. I live in Hamlin County and um, okay. our whole county government is Republican. Right. And, uh, but all, we have 14 county commissioners and they're all Republican, but I bet you can't sit there and go like this or go like that without hitting a real, truly hitting a Democrat. And uh, we had one independent that ran for school board and it was a uncontested seat and he's really a Democrat, but you know, uh, so, you know, that you had to follow as a, as a party this time to run. So he wouldn't file as a Republican or Democrat. So, and everyone that knows him said, Hey, he's a big time liberal. So it's, it's the same, it's the same way here. So, yeah. and, uh, and it shows when they vote. Yeah. Uh, when they're, when they're voting on uh, issues at the County commission, and our city council is uh, nonpartisan. So, well, Charles, how do you get that information out in the hands of the voters to let them know that person A is a true Republican, conservative, constitutionalist, and this person really isn't? How do they know that? That's the question that we wanted to answer. So, like, we knew if we built this brand, right, and that if we put a process in place, where, you know, a Republican can can run as a Republican, he, he or she can vote as a Republican and make a claim, I'm conservative, I'm a Republican. But who's out there doing the review of the person saying based on their voting record, their history, all the things that you do to vet a person, who's out there to tell the voter like, you know, hey, on a, on a scale from one to 10, this person's really like a three. Right. Right. That's where we came in. We wanted to say, we're going to vet these candidates. And then we're going to tell you based on our vetting process, who we think uh, measures up. And I think that is what voters need to know because voters are short term, right? right. Election time comes. They're not thinking they're like, okay, oh wait, I got to go vote. They start picking up their flyers and they go, okay. Uh, okay. That Republican. Okay. I'll go vote. Yeah. They need to get it. We need to get information in their hands because not all Republicans are the same, are they, Charles? Nope, nope, nope. And nope. or I, I was on my way to the polls and I seen six of his signs and I only seen two of the other guys. So right. the other guy seems like a winner. So I'm yeah. for him. Yeah. <laughs> or that sure. person. Okay. So uh, so when you guys got started, uh did you or any of your other members any have any uh, political training or activist training to get you started kind of in the mindset of how, what you wanted to go, what you wanted to work towards? Yeah, you know, some of us, including myself, I've ran before. So I had run a, a campaign um, before I started this group. Um, with others. And, and also I worked on many campaigns. Like I've probably knocked on 20,000 doors in my life of either myself or other candidates. I can't tell you how many I, I've driven thousands of miles. I've put up thousands of signs. I mean, um, a lot of us, and in, in our case, we got a little lucky because some of us had, we had um, backgrounds in graphic design. We had backgrounds in marketing. We had backgrounds in IT and cybersecurity um, um, and just politics and government and political science. So 
we were able to find a lot of people that really had a unique background that that would work well when you needed to train candidates. And, you know, we'd taken training. Many of us had taken um, the Center for Self-Governance training, mm-hmm. um, uh, di- different types of training. And, and plus with our background, like, you know, I was never really a graphic designer. That wasn't my thing. I can't tell you how many mailers I've done, how many signs I've designed. I mean, like I do sign design and mailer design and graphic design as like a second nature now. But when we first started, I, I wasn't, that wasn't my thing. I wasn't great at it, but we had a guy that was, and he kind of trained us and we kind of just use each other. Um, when, when you have, literally thousands of members now that come in um you find the unique skill sets of what people can do and you know they're you know in an activist group a grassroots group they're very eager to say hey guess what i have a degree in marketing i've been doing marketing for 20 years like i know how to do messaging and branding like we got a guy that's a brander he specializes in branding that all the stuff you see behind me right right you know, that was completely designed for free by him. Cool. You know? So yeah. we were lucky enough to find people that had skills to help do what we need to do. Yeah. So. And and lucky enough is probably to say that they actually come and knocked on the door and just said, hey, how can I help? Yeah. yeah. Or you got me up front saying, hey, if you've got a unique skill set, let us know. You know, Mary needs help. You know, Tim needs help. Can you knock doors? Can you, what can you do? And at the very least, you know, I would tell people, if you can't do anything, can you give them 20 bucks? I mean, everybody can do something in the group to help. Absolutely. So, uh, so once you got started uh, with your group and everything, uh, what kind of pushback did you did you or your group get from the politicians or the the establishment there? Well, well it, you know, great question. So, you know, first it sort of started out as, you know, we we weren't really anybody to worry about. We were just a club. We were just a bunch of ankle biters. It's like we were a t- tiny group. Like we weren't. Nobody cared. Right. Um, but as we started to grow and started to get traction, the first thing that started was that people were trying to say that we were pretending to be the Sumner County Republican Party, right? We were right. trying to fool people into thinking that. And that's not the case at all. Matter of fact, we tell our members, um, go be involved in the local Republican Party, pay your dues, be an active member. We're not here to replace the Republican Party of Sumner County. Our job in our minds is to take the Republican Party and pull them to the right, right? We're like a boat anchor that keeps them to the right because the left is constantly pulling even the Republican Party to the left. Yep. So we wanted to work with them. So you know, there was a few people, you know, calling us a fake group and, mm-hmm. you know, imposters and that sort of stuff. It didn't get any traction, didn't last long. I think most people, for the most part, just, just you know, there's not a lot of people paying attention, you know, so we had to do some education on our part, right? We had to talk to a lot of people and say, hey, there's the Republican Party, and here's who they are and what they do. And then there's this club or group. Call us whatever you want. We're just moms, dads, friends, neighbors, right? We just came together and we advocate for you know God fearing, constitutional, conservative Christian values, right? Right. And that's what we want. And if that's a group or a club or a tiny group, we don't care. We knew that we were going to recruit people that were like minded. And you know, at the end of the day, Charles, we. When you look at the demographics of Sumner County, where I'm at, and I'm sure it's probably very similar where you are, I knew the ingredients of the type of people that we needed to make this group work were here, right? I've had people ask me about Davidson County there in Nashville. That's a different makeup down there. Yes. Will this group be like it is? Do I think it's possible to have this group 
have the success down there like it has here? I think the answer is no, I don't have the ingredients. But in places like I'm sure Sumner County or Hamblin County or, you know, wherever, right? Knox County, maybe not so much, right? Shelby County, not so much. Right. You know, so I think the ingredients are here for us to do what we're doing. And, and we've just simply just slowly grown into this big, powerful thing. And I'll tell you what, these politicians, they we're not tiny group anymore. They're coming to us and they're saying, we want to be endorsed by you. So one of the things that we do is we go through the vetting process of a candidate and then we decide if we're going to endorse in that race. And we hold that endorsement as, as very tight and close as we can. And we make sure, or at least we try to, we're not perfect right? People lie to us sometimes and we're not sure and we hear rumors. So, but we do our best to really vet these people. And if we, we think they're one of us, we hold what we call an endorsing convention. We allow them, they come in, they speak the month before. So we, they came and spoke in August and they said, Hey, you know, I'm Bob Smith. I'm running for city council. And I am one of you guys and here's why. And we bombard them with questions and then we get into their life and we figure out if they are seem to be who they say they are. And then here, uh, not, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, we will do an actual endorsing convention where we will have a ballot with all of the people seeking endorsement and our group will actually vote whether we're going to endorse people. And then, you know, they're looking for that endorsement. So yeah. Um, now, kind of a follow up question to that. Do, have your has your group uh, actually sat down and came up with a core uh, principle type set of questions that you that every candidate must answer? No. And here's what we do. So we wanted to kind of keep the vetting process a little bit what's the word i'm looking for here um secretive right we don't want people to necessarily know what we're doing in terms of trying to find out about you right because we have a variety we have some people that are that are security experts they're specialists in, in cyber security and background checks and different things like that so we've had we've learned some methods on how to look for things, but not tip people off to kind of how, how they can maybe fool us, right? Right, right. Um, and that's been really successful, right? Um, just to give a little bit of a hint away, you know, um, a person's friends will often tell you a lot about a person. Mm -hmm. You know, who you hang out with, who you run with. Some of these people you 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 get to know real quick, like. Oh, they're really good friends with so and so. Well, that's probably a bad thing or a good thing, right? So you can have some really big clues right off the bat. Right. Um, another thing we're getting ready to institute, institute, which we haven't done before, we're going to add this month, is we have you know the people's pledge. Like you know, we're going to have you sign a statement that basically says that you're pledging to um, meet these values. Right. Uh, these criteria, we want you to have a stake in saying, because sometimes people will be like, well, I got endorsed, but they endorsed me. Right. right. They, 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 we don't want them to be able to waver from that. We want them to say, no, if you want our, our endorsement, you're going to sign this where it specifically says you are seeking our endorsement. Yep. So we want that on paper. And then we want you to pledge to the values of republicanism, conservatism, and, and the, you know, constitution and all of those things. Yep. So I um, had an issue with the state representative a few, several years back who, who signed the pledge not to uh, vote for any kind of tax increase and then come back and say, well, that was 18 months ago. You're not going to hold me to that, are you? You know, <laughs> so yeah, I know how that works. So, uh, all right. So did I ask you about what advice would you give to another group? Uh, no, but I'm happy to answer that. So uh, what advice would you give to someone or another group that was trying to get started? Uh, 
what's some good advice for them? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd say that the first thing, obviously, you have to make sure that wherever you want to do this, if if you're wanting to create a group that's that's going to bring in like-minded constitutional conservative Republicans, however you want to describe that, if you're looking for that, then what you need to do is you need to make sure the ingredients are there. If the ingredients are there, then you're good to go. So the next step is you're going to have to form some kind of leadership chain, right? Who's going to run and manage this group or at least start the group? So you want to get a core group of people together, right? And then you want to you want to write some bylaws and some rules. So we've got basic bylaws. Um, we didn't want to be a group that you could swoop in in the late night hour and just pay 50 bucks and then go around and call yourself a member. Right. In order to be a member of our group, you have to attend uh, five meetings a year. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't subscribe to what we subscribe. It doesn't mean that you aren't a part of what we do, but we distinguish between a voting member and somebody who just says they're a member because we wanted to be grassroots roots. You have to be active in this group. Right. We need doers. We need people that are going to run for office. We need people that are going to help others run for office. Right. Those are the two main criteria that you have to have. But you got to come together with a good leadership chain, some good bylaws and then a, and then a plan on what you're going to do. And in, in our case, we knew we were going to have a Saturday meeting. And what we, our focus was in the early beginning was let's bring in educational speakers and let's bring in people that can teach people, whether it's about, you know, open records and how to request an open records or how does the legislature work? You know, all of their, you know, tell us about the first, you know, the Constitution and let's go through and teach all these things. Right. You have to educate people on how government works in general and basic. So we, we knew we had to start doing that first. And in conjunction with that. The hard part is the next part, Charles, you and I have done it. It's you've got it. Once you find the person, when I go and meet really good conservative constitutional people and say, hey, will you run for office? I need you. The first thing, whoa, not me. You know, they don't, you don't want me up there, right? Everybody's got a reason why they can't run. And then they sit home and they go, I don't understand. Why do we have like Nancy Pelosi? and Chuck yes. Schumer and the list goes, why do we have those people it's because you know people like us Charles you know the true conservative type you know we're not anti-government but we want we want a government that works for the people but also you know sort of leaves us alone right huh. Well, our biggest nightmare is like waking up and finding out the government hired 87,000 IRS agents yep. to come after people, right? That we don't like that. We, you know, so a lot of times when you ask people to run, they don't, they want to be left alone. They bought a house in the woods. They got 10 guns. It's true. They want to be left alone. I want right. to be left. Alone. But the reality is this, if you don't take an interest in politics, Politics will take an interest in you in one way or another. Yeah. And that you think you're being left alone, minding your own business, and then you got to knock on the at the door, right? Right. And it's government, and we're here to help, and we know how that goes, right? Right. So convincing people to buy into the fact that not only if if they will run, and this is the hard part, another reason why people won't run is because they don't know how. Right. right. And they're scared. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we tell, I tell candidates, now we've gotten to a point where our team is so large now, like I tell candidates, you run, I'm putting a team behind you. Right. Right. You 10 o'clock at night, you're scratching your head, freaked out. Like, hey, what do I do tomorrow? You can pick the phone. You can call me. You can call one of, you know, 20 people. And what we tell people is we're going to tell you what to do on day one, and we're going to tell you what to do on day 120. Yeah. And once they realize, like, are you serious? Like, you're going to guide me? Yes. I'm yes. going to tell you when to eat, how to eat, how to chew, how to drink. And they love that because it takes, it takes so much stress immediately off of them that they're like, you're telling me all I really need to do, Kurt, is go out, knock doors, 
tell people my message and get them to vote for me and all the other stuff you'll help me solve. And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. No. So that's key, Charles, is you have to have a team that, you know, you can put around these people. Now, as you first start out, you don't have a big team. Well, the good news is also you probably don't have a ton of candidates as well, right? right. Yeah. I had one, I had really our first candidate, the first time we did any of this, we had one candidate, <laughs> one. Right. And we put everything behind them. We put all the money we had. We helped them in every way. And guess what? We won. Right. right. So one candidate, all right, good. So next time came around two years later, we had five candidates, right? And um, four of them won, right? Four out of, so great. This last time, this was our third election. We had, um, let's see, we had 20, well, it depends on if it's in the primary. So we've had two this year. Our win rate right now is um, above 80%. That's which is fantastic. Oh, it's incredible. People yeah. are like, how are you winning 80% of these races? And I'm like, I, I just told you, right? I just explained it. You build the group, you put the leadership in place, you find the resources, get people trained up. You find the people that can build your website, that can do your mailer, that can show you how to market and do branding and messaging and all of that, which we have now in mass scale. And then people realize they start coming to meetings and they look around and they go, you know, but Jeremy won and, and then Karen won and Lee won and mm -hmm. right. Like they feel it starts to just spread even more and more once you start getting a couple of wins under your belt. So, and, and that's really the ingredients for what you, you can do. And listen, we, we want to spread, you know, what we're doing here and, and what's different about a lot of these groups, Charles, we don't want to be centralized Right. A lot of times there's a central component and then everything bleeds down. We wanted to create a decentralized model. Right. We want to take the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans and I want to give it to another county in Tennessee, whether it's Hamblin County or Knox County, and they want to be Knox County Constitutional Republicans. Do it here. Take our stuff. Right. Here's our logo. We'll brand it to you. It's yours. You own it. It may have similarities obviously to what we have great no problem right here's our bylaws what we made you don't like them then change them do whatever you want but if you know we want to spread this and give you a vehicle where charles if it's you or somebody that can pick up the phone and say kurt hey man um we got questions boom i'm here to answer and then you know a lot of these people would call me the architect or the expert come to this group i'm i'm just one dude I'm, I might have been a big part of the beginning, but there are so many people now that like I've gotten this group to a point where I feel great that I can disappear and this group will go on without me. And that's what I want. So. One of the keys to leadership, backfilling that way, if you're not there, it goes on without you. That's, right. a, great, that's a great leader right there. And, uh, I like that. Uh, add to a couple of things that you were saying there. Um, you you are building a foundation. You have built a foundation, and what a lot of people don't understand is it's what the left has got really good at, and the right is slowly catching up with it. Uh, the left has had that for decades. Plug in the candidate, we'll take care of you. Yep. The right now has got to plug in that right candidate, the great candidate, and then help them. Because here's what I've always seen. A good candidate gets involved, doesn't know what they're doing, they lose, and then they're never to be heard of again because they think they can't win because it's so hard. When they really, all they really need is some people to, guide them the right way yeah and uh something else uh, one of the things that i always will remember is is you talk about people getting involved well i always prayed for somebody to do something and then one day i realized that i was somebody so you yeah. can do something so that, that's some good stuff right there um 
My other question is, uh, what are the, some of the local and state issues that you or your group may be uh, have on your radar to kind of look at now that the um, county general election's over? And yeah. I realize we still have the state general coming up, but so what's some of the things that y'all have on your radar that you want to work on? Well, you you know, one one thing we've struggled with from the state level is how much involvement do we want to get in the state races, right? right. So we we have traditionally steered away from state races. And the the reason for that, at least in the beginning here, is that, you know, state races are those are big, expensive, can be multi-county races. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to really focus on our city. So our alderman races, our school board, and our county commission is where we've been focused. We we just, we've had nobody on the school board here and we just ran four candidates, three of them won. Wow. Right. Um, so we're really putting effort into our school board and our local stuff. But what we want to get to is we really want to get to probably not this year and, and we haven't been working on it. But in a couple of years, we're going to take the next step and really focus on these state races, whether it's our state senator race or our, our, our representatives. We just haven't been involved. That's kind of step two. Right. We really wanted we just took over the commission. The Sumner County Commission is now ours. OK. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've got cities here where we've got our candidates for the majority. We're, there's other cities we're working on. The school board, we made a big dent this year. In two years, we, pan, we plan to go after the rest of the seats, right, um, as well. So we've got a plan to kind of work up to that state level issues. But right now, at least over the next two years, we're going to continue to focus really just on Sumner County. Okay. Uh, and, and that works. I mean, as we said, but at starting off, locals right where it's at. That's yeah. what we that should be our first focus. Well, Charles, the way we look at it, if you think about like uh for an analogy, let's use the NFL, right? You don't just never play football and start in the NFL. No, a lot of people they start in Pee Wee and they go through youth football and then junior high, high school, college, NFL. That's what we're doing with this group. We had to start very small right? Focus on our county. We'll get the school board and some city aldermatic races. Then we'll get up to senator, state senator. And then, you know, we hope to get involved in, you know, U.S. House reps, right. maybe statewide, you know, some bigger things. So. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you, what you're doing right now is, is local first. And yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. And, you know, and uh, trust me, uh, I think, uh, Focusing on the local, uh, your representatives around are are taking notice of it. Yeah, and uh, guarantee you, if you if um, something come up and y'all made a few phone calls, hey, we're the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans. Um, we just want to let you know we see how you're voting. Uh, we want you to vote like this on this issue. Uh, you would probably get more done than what you think. No, we actually, we do. We get that. I have people call me up and, you know, they'll tell me, Hey, I know these guys aren't running because they know that if your, your group's going to be against them and they're not going to be able to win. So people rhinos, as we like to call them, right. These fake right. Republicans here in Sumner County, especially if you look at a town like Hendersonville, there's some races where they've had some existing council folks that are like all leaving, like to none of them are rerunning. And we're like, what? You know, and people are like, dude, they're they're scared of the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans because they know that you guys have great candidates that you're going to back and they can't win and they, they don't even want to run now. Right. So we're definitely seeing that we're having success. And, you know, I think our job is to continue to be focused, stay humble, you know, put God first in everything that we do, which is crucial to, to everything we do. Um, and I think we can continue to, to grow and do and battle and win more races. Absolutely. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, the first time I saw you was on your interview with the, uh, uh, uh what is his name now? Ben, ben Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah, party, yeah, Ben Cunningham, uh, Nashville Tea Party, 
And uh, I was like, I got to get in touch with these guys and, and interview him uh, because, I you know, I've been – I've done a lot of it on the activist side and doing what you're doing. And, and that's what I absolutely love to do because when you succeed at it, it's, it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And Ben, Ben came to one of our meetings. I invited him to a meeting and he came and um, it was happened to be a meeting where I, we had all of our candidates that were running and I entered, you know, I brought them to the front of the room and let them speak a little bit. And, and we had 25 of them up there after the meeting, you know, Ben comes and finds me and pulls me to the side and says, man, I don't think I've ever seen in all my years, a better collection of just really high quality candidates. And I said, you know, I, I, and I, and I agreed with him, of course, but I think where I'm going with that is, is, is that the ingredients are there. These people, we have unbelievable human beings that are out there that are going to be unbelievable leaders, but somebody's got to tap them on the shoulder and tell them it's time, it's right. your, your time. And they'll say, I, Kurt, why me? And then when I say, if not you, then who? And that chews on them, right? And they think, yeah, you're right. If I don't do it, I'm just going to go back and bitch about everything I hate. I'm going to complain and complain and complain. But we need people to step up and step out. And they're out there and they just need encouragement. You know, another part of what I've tried to do and I feel like is my calling is to just be available, right? Hey, I'm, call me, text me. I encourage them. I tell them you're doing, listen, I'll look at them. Even if they're, I don't care what position they're in. I just encourage you're doing a great job. Keep doing up the work and they need that. And I think that's a big part in, in, in what helps them to continue uh, to grow and be successful. Fantastic. Well, you know, like I said, I seen that and I said, I, you know, uh, what I seen that y'all did down there was remarkable and uh, and I know that those successes are out there. You just got to have people willing to to get in there and fight and do it. And so that's why I said I got to interview, uh, got to interview Kirk and help him get his message and, and spread that. So uh, now, are you in Hamblin County? Yes. Yeah. So like if you're looking for an avenue, you know, something to create you know, or your listeners are out there and they live in, I don't know, Greene County or Granger or Hawkins or wherever they are. If they're looking for an avenue to create this, you know, we've got the material, we've got, you know, basically everything you need, you know, we're willing, especially once we get past November, right. Cause we're trying to concentrate on our local races. Listen, after November, we're happy to you know, host you guys. We're happy to, you know, try to get some people to come if we have to come where you are or meet halfway or virtual, whatever we have to do. If you're looking for an avenue and you you think you can take this, this project we've got and you can implement it your way and, and be successful, we would love to just help you do that. Yeah. Great. Uh, give your, uh, give your uh, uh, website. Website is, uh, sccrtn.org again sccrtn.org yeah and uh so like i said uh, i think it's fantastic the job y'all are doing down there the the results that y'all are putting forth putting out and everything is fantastic and uh I, hey uh, i'm happy for you it's man to keep up the fight and, and help spread that uh you know, the, the thing is, uh, here in the state, it's uh, every state. We have one group that wants to do this and one group that wants to do that. We all need to remember that we are all should be focusing on for uh, limited government. Yes. That's the goal that we want. And yes. uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, was it Ronald Reagan who said, maybe it was Ronald Reagan that said, it's, it's amazing what we could get done if we don't worry about who, who gets the credit for it. That's right. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, getting our counties and cities straight, pushing back at the state level, getting our state, uh, right. So we can push back at the federal level 
you know, getting that mindset from the from the bottom up is That's the way right. it's going to work. And uh, so uh, I think well, it's great. Charles, what we need to do. I always say, like, you know, we, you and I talk about, you know, from that bottom up, it's like, how do you become a U.S. house rep or president, right? A lot of these guys, you have to start and work your way up. Like, we're going to have to, we've got, I call them little seeds. We planted all these little seeds and we're watering them. And I'm hoping that these little seeds that are city aldermen or their county commissioners, I'm hoping they grow up and become, you know, a state senator or governor, you know, house rep, U.S. house rep, president. I mean, why not? The sky's the limit. But it starts with that small grassroots, you know, my pledge to you is, Charles, I'll take care of Sumner County and you promise me you'll take care of Hamblin County. And if we all get together, it's all the counties in Tennessee's and we get Kurtz and Charles's and they make that pledge. I'll take care of my backyard. You take care of yours. Do we'll take care of everything will work its way out. I believe that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so anyway, well, uh, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, and uh, I, I think we could talk for another hour. You probably, probably could. We you probably know, could. And exchange stories because I'm sure you've got plenty of other ones. And I've got a ton of them. And uh, so, but I, I really thank you for, for joining me. And uh, as I've said from the start, uh, from the start of the video, uh, follow me on uh, Facebook at Charles Cook you know, on my Facebook page. You can follow me on YouTube at Rumble, uh, Charles Cook 52. Uh, look up these guys on, uh, on their website at, for Sumner County Constitutional Republicans and uh, check them out see some of the successes that they've had and and uh, uh, get involved and remember your local government is where it's at uh, so much that that affects you happens on the local and state level and if you sit and start to think about it it, it has more effect on you than the federal level so uh, get involved in it, pay attention to what's going on, go to a city council meeting, go to a county commission meeting. And if you get a chance, go to Nashville uh, when the session starts in January and just walk around and look at, look, look what's going on at the Corda Hall building and stuff. So anyway, thank you, Kirk, uh, for joining me and uh, a great interview. And I'd like to have you back again sometime and talk with you. With that, I'm going to close out for this evening. You got anything you want to say before we before we jump off here? Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. All right, everyone, have a good night, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.